Hi, welcome to the webinar of PRINCE2. So as part of this webinar, we are going to look at understanding about GAN chart. I am CMR Chandra MR, a certified professional in PRINCE2, PMP, Agile Scrum Master, ITL expert, ITL managing professional, COBIT5 and DevOps Foundation. When we say GAN chart, it is one of the tools and techniques which is basically used for schedule management. So the agenda of this webinar is to understand what is GAN chart, which is used in the project management, history of GAN chart, elements of GAN chart, and benefits which a project manager will have by using the GAN chart as part of a project. So GAN chart is a tool, techniques which is used to manage the projects, and this helps to make the project schedule visible. It also presents how each of the activities in the projects are connected to each other and how project flows. It is basically the visual representation of project tasks, activities displaced against the schedule, the time. So this chart typically outlines all activities that are performed in the project and in a systematic order to represent critical pieces of information. So since it is a visual representation, it is very easy to visualize what activity is done after which activity. The flow can be easily visualized. Many a times when it comes to resource optimization, resource management, cash flow management, and any time where project performance is delaying or going as per the plan or going faster, that is easily visible in terms of schedule perspective. So that it is very easy for project manager to manage and also represent the same while presenting it to the stakeholders so that the actual project progression is also visible. So firstly, when we create a Gantt chart, that will provide the plan. Plan is visible visually. Actual performance will also be visible visually, which will help to understand what is the percentage of project is complete at a given point in time. So history of Gantt chart. So history of Gantt chart, it starts from 1765 where firstly it was introduced by Joseph Priestley in his charts of biography. Then later in 1786, precursor of Gantt chart in commercial and political atlas by William Lefer was used, was shown. So Carol Adminiki developed something like Gantt chart for his construction project during 1896. Further, during 1910, Henry Gantt introduced this version of chart which raised to popularity as Gantt chart. So Gantt chart were used for tracking of small arms and ammunition along with commercial shipping for World War I that was during 1917. Later Gantt chart was first used as official term in Valence Clark's books named the Gantt chart a working tool of management during 1923. So during 1980 with the development of software industry, Gantt chart experienced a sudden resurgence in popularity. Now, as I mentioned earlier, since this Gantt charts provide the visual representation, it is always easy. When we have a visual representation, it is always easy for us to understand it correctly with less misunderstanding or less misinterpretation. So why using the Gantt chart in the projects? That clarity of visualization, that's the reason it has become more popular. Today, whatever the technology is being used, whatever the tools are being used, Everywhere the Gantt chart you can see. Gantt chart used for representing the way the project flows. Gantt chart being used to represent the allocation of resources. Gantt chart used to track the project progression and see where exactly the project is going slow or in schedule or going ahead. So now let us look at the elements of Gantt chart. So as you look at this picture, if you can see the left side uh, in the each row, you have the name of a task like initial planning, planning phase one, phase two, phase three, then a summary of it, then additional phases. So it will provide the list of things and that is a list of things, list of activities which needs to be done. At the same time, in the right side, you can see the graphical representation of that. It has a multiple colors. So if you closely look at this, if you look at this bar, it is in dark as well as blue. Similarly, if you look at these three tasks and a summary meeting here, summary activity here. So all these four activities or five activities are under this main activity, initial planning. 
so it is easily visible to us at the same time we will also have that relationship who is the successor and which activity is the predecessor that is also visible so phase 1 is connected to phase 2 similarly this phase 2 is connected to phase 3 after phase 3 it is summary meeting summarizing all of this now this dark line represents the plan similarly this lighter blue colors represents the plan whereas this blue color which is there shows the percentage of completion of the work now here overall including all the three phases it is 12.5 percent complete in the given example whereas phase 1 30 percent complete phase 2 0 percent complete and phase 3 0 percent complete similarly if you look at for additional planning this includes additional phase 1 additional phase 2 additional phase 3 the summary activity is not included here similarly for quality assurance you have phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 but remember it is not necessary that each of the summary element each of the tasks or activities should not have only three phases it is not that it is just a representation here it may be having any number of phases possible but basically the Gantt chart provides you this visibility very clearly with this bar where the actual plan is visible actual progression is visible now by chance if today is the day which i am looking at the actual day is this if, if you can look at the cursor where it is if i assume this is the day i'm looking at this graph the actual completion should be phase one fully complete and phase two fully complete if i'm looking at if today is this and analysis based on that what i can make is understanding would be project is delayed project is not progressing as per the plan if i assume i am checking this point in time today is this then project is as per the plan if today is somewhere here then project is ahead of the schedule so that date when i am checking this i will look at pictorially how it is progressing and this relationship i think we should know more on this relationship as well the way it is connected phase one is getting completed and phase two is starting and after phase two phase three is starting which means only after the previous phase finishes next phase starts the relationship is called as finish to start similarly you can have such connections like start to start relationships start to finish relationships finish to finish relationship even those relationships would be clearly visible in the visual representation one more thing if you observe here between phase one and phase two the arrow is coming like this where before the completion of phase one phase two starting meaning there is some lead definitely the relationship is finished to start but however there is some lead put here so these leads and lags can be put into the activities based on the requirements for phase two to start in the phase one there are certain minimum things to get completed once that is completed, if you can able to start phase two, if situations arose by having sufficient resources, sufficient cash flow, sufficient individuals, yes, you can do that by adding certain leads that is also visible. Which means phase two activity is not necessarily waiting the phase one activity to fully complete, but it is starting before that when minimum number of outputs which is supposed to complete in phase one will happen, it will just start afterwards. But if you see between phase two and phase three, there is some distance. Means only after phase two is complete, phase three is starting. So it is waiting for entire phase two to complete. Phase two, phase three will not start. That's how the representations would be visible. How much is that complete? And what is the plan ahead as per the schedule or behind? That is clearly visible. So this representation includes task lists timelines then date lines actual dates when it is started like february quarter one 2014 it is starting so this chart can also provide you the daily details in terms of which day which activity one can represent to that level as well so in this picture since we cannot present everything we're just focusing on what understanding one should have about this so you can go with each day representation in the gantt chart so it's clearly visible which day what is being done then you will have a bar as i mentioned it is represented by bars milestones if i mention this summary meeting where is there is a deliverable at initial planning what are the deliverables here i can summarize i can also say that as a milestone deliverable so even that representation would be done using gantt chart so easily visible 
then dependencies as i mentioned there are relationship establishment between one task to other task obviously there is a dependency unless the previous predecessor activity completes the successor activity cannot start dependency as i mentioned like finish to start start to finish finish to finish start to start such representation helps us to understand the dependencies and also as i mentioned between phase 1 activity and phase 2 there is a lead so condition to have that lead that is also a dependency which can be explained then progress how the project is progressing is that as per the schedule is ahead of schedule or behind schedule that is also visible very clearly using the gantt chart then resources assigned so this picture what we have in the slide does not show the resource assignment clearly but however there will be columns there will be areas where you can input the resources required and the quantity because every activity we do when we create a work breakdown structure in every activity in the wbs we need to have a resource assigned to it what is the resource what is the effort required by that resource and when is that resource required in what quantity based on the effort so these are done in a scope management so one scope management scope is baseline and provide those details so when i say scope baseline basically it is a work breakdown structure for a given scope those are broken into multiple pieces to the logically division you will make the product logical division you will make and see various different parts of that particular product or service whatever you are creating out of this project and for that resources are assigned after doing the effort estimation so scope management resource management works together two knowledge areas works together to bring out clearly what exactly the resource is needed at what point in time so once that is cleared what resource is required at what point in time so one would know what resource has to be assigned and this gantt chart will help you to visualize clearly when i need that resource when aspect of that resource will be clearly visible here so that you can able to bring that resources required but further if that resources are not available or further if you find going in this flow you are wasting a lot of time you have an opportunity to optimize optimize in terms of cost optimize in terms of schedule optimize in terms of resources yes this gantt chart since it is visible a visual representation easily you can optimize and ensure doing the project in optimized way and establish the required control so then benefits of using gantt charts so benefits of using gantt charts would be it provides a better transparency when is a better transparency obviously we know what activity at what point in time is happening the flow is visible to us so that there is no misinterpretation or misrepresentation of any data or information relating to the project it enables improved communication so it is always told and experienced when someone says verbally so someone hears that so if i communicate to someone other person will hear me the ear or listen there is a two different thing assuming they listen even though they listen understand what i am saying but still the duration it stays in their mind in their memory is less secondly if i show some picture and explain they can relate so visual representation pictorial representation and then conveying certain things to someone always helps to interpret better and remember that for long time that way gantt chart helps to have an improved communication so that better understanding better communication can happen provides motivation so as you see visually something is happening it is like action which is happening in front of you so more action oriented are the things happening in front of anyone it's a motivation yes it is progressing this way it is going the way we actually planned it is going it is delayed okay we need to make some corrections so since it is immediately visible it is clear it is easy to take an action refined coordination so there is not be any confusion between what is being told versus what is being done on ground so many a times project manager will have a bigger challenge in terms of what is told versus what is being done so when you have a clearly articulated communication which is very clear there is no rooms for misrepresentation or misinterpretation it is always easy to do that work and get it accomplished so refined coordination in the sense a very well established coordination among the team members 
to accomplish the things enhances creativity so more visible things are i think more dimensions are visible so one can work on bringing that enhancements required for project management improve time management it's quite obvious the optimization of schedule optimization of resources optimization of cost can be done as i mentioned earlier so obviously it is time management will become more effective and it is easy to control the actions which are going beyond the boundary of what is being defined better manageability more visibility one would have more clarity one has it is easy to manage so something which is not visible to you something which is not clear to someone something which is not at all defined properly something which is ambiguous management struggles to not help it is always better to have that visibility so that better manageability can be achieved greater flexibility so greater flexibility because already i have told you can add leads you can add lags you can understand if minimum number of activities which needs to be completed then i can have a lead or wait for an activity to complete and then start the next activity all such decisions can be made easily so that way it can provide greater flexibility so with this understanding about the gantt chart is complete it is just a brief understanding about gantt chart we may require to work on understanding it thoroughly through an example i hope this webinar provided you some insight towards understanding about gantt chart thank you for being here until next time thank you so much take care i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning